teachers across the country are facing unprecedented pressures from the pandemic and various public health measures to unruly parents at school board meetings. And let's not forget the calls to actually arm teachers in the wake of school shootings. According to the American Federation of Teachers, 79 percent of teachers surveyed said they were dissatisfied with their current working conditions. And 74 percent said they would most likely not recommend the profession to new teachers. Back in May, I had a chance to ask Education Secretary Miguel Cardona about this very issue. Take a listen to what he had to say. One of my goals is to really help lift the profession. You know, teachers were heroes on, on, on one day and then blamed for school closures the next. I want a better competitive salary for educators, um, good working conditions, which means better professional development. If teachers are feeling underappreciated and burned out, how is that impacting students in the classroom? Joining me now to answer that question is Randy Weingarten. She is the president of the American Federation of Teachers. Randy, thank you so much for being here. You are the perfect person to ask, what are you hearing from the teachers themselves? What are they saying about what they're facing? Um, they've got all this pressure, and I would argue more pressure now than ever before in the profession. Absolutely. So first, thank you for having me on, and it's great to see your show and love it. Um, so I'm sitting here, I just walked out of a round table we're having Houston, Texas, where 43,000 teachers left teaching last year. And, mm. you know, AFT Texas, our local state organization, made the clarion call about what was going on here. But what we're doing today with superintendents and with teacher union reps around the state of Texas, we're doing it at the U of H campus, is talking about solutions for how we solve this shortage. But in short, and you're right, everything came crashing down. It's like a perfect storm. We already had 300,000 fewer teachers, you know, who, who leave every year, two-thirds before retirement. That was pre-pandemic. We already had a situation because, you know, it's become such a cultural war that um, particularly extremists, instead of um, helping us they're blaming and shaming teachers and calling them all sorts of names. Um, and then on top of it, you got real issues in terms of the two years of disruption have created real issues for kids. I mean, there are kids who came into school last year who couldn't hold a pen or a pencil or a crayon because they were on devices all the time. And so we need to lower class size. We need to wrap services around for kids. And we need to actually give teachers more time on task and pay them more and stop the blaming and the shaming. I often say the Aretha song, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, should be a live practice as opposed to just a great, fabulous song. <laughs> and that doesn't cost a dime to do that. So I guess... Is the solution really just pay more benefits, um, pay better? Uh, what is really going to make a change here? Because in Texas, there's a teacher shortage. There's shortages in Ohio. There, well, there's shortages all over this country right now. And students are going into the classroom this week. Some went last week. And it's just, it's just not the, the, the best environment all around for anybody. Right. OK, there's four things that we need to do. But what let me let me talk about pay first just to get it out of the way. For the same skills and knowledge that teachers need, collaboration, listening skills, content skills, in this hot job market, teachers can get paid 25% more for these same skills in a non-teaching job. So if you want to raise your family, you want to build, you know, buy a house, that 25% is a big lure, you know, in another profession. But, but that's one. The second is respect, respect, respect. Mm. If these, like, every time Governor DeSantis calls a teacher names, saying, you know, doing the culture war as opposed to rolling up his sleeves and helping teachers teach, that is terrible in terms of teaching. The third issue is teachers learning, uh, teachers teaching conditions are kids' learning conditions. 
So in New York City, for example, we're trying to lower class size so that we can actually meet the needs of kids. And the fourth issue was essentially, we need to have these kind of grow your own programs, create more diversity in our teaching force, making sure our kids see their lived experience. So if we did those four things, which frankly, countries outside of the United States, Western democracies do, yeah. we could do it if people you know, wanted to do this, if there was well, 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 we could do it. Because this is the great thing, and this is where I'll end. This is the great thing about school teachers. They know this stuff. They want to make a difference in the lives of kids. There's something in them that wants to help children. That is the soul of America's teachers, and we need to cherish that. I, I absolutely agree with you, Randy. And I think that the fourth point you made about representation in the classroom is so important. I did not have a, a, a black teacher until I went to college. And that is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. In your four points that you mentioned, I, I'm wondering, is there any particular legislation um, that could happen, maybe even at the federal level, to address these issues? Uh, yes. I, I know you are somebody that uh, regularly makes your voice heard at the White House, and so I have to imagine you have, you have raised some things. Yes. I mean, look, let's just put it this way. Let me give you two examples. Number one, the American Rescue Plan has really helped create the buffer that we need in these two years. Um, there's a lot of money. It should be used this year for um, ventilation, better ventilation. It should be used in, in Baltimore, for example, to put HVAC systems in because they're closing schools early in Baltimore because they don't have air conditioning. It was one of the reasons for the Columbus strike. So the American Rescue Plan has helped to create a buffer. We need to do more. Like what Michelle Lujan Grisham did in, in New Mexico was, I would say, A++++. Plus plus plus. She raised teacher salaries. She's focused on the kind of getting rid of paperwork, wrapping services around, making sure retirees can go back and be um, substitute teachers. So that was a really good plan, and more governors need to do this. But the plea I would make is this. Less of the culture wars and more of let's go back to reading, let's go back to basics. What education does is prepares kids for their lives, for their careers, and that's what we need to do. We need to make sure we have the support to prepare children for their lives, to be empathetic, to be critical thinkers, to understand practical skills. This should not be a political war. There should be support for teachers. Mm, there should be support for teachers. Randy Weingarten, thank you very much for your time. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you.